What's going on everybody? I'm the two-wheel teacher and this is a 2019 Harley-Davidson Electric Glide Ultra Limited. And today I'm going to be doing a review, walk around, and a test ride. Let's jump in. So the Electric Glide is a model name that's been in the Harley-Davidson family for decades at this point. And this motorcycle here, or at least something like it, is probably what you think of when you think of a Harley-Davidson motorcycle. It is sort of the quintessential touring bike that you can get from Harley-Davidson. And there's a reason why it's one of their best selling models. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the features that keep people coming back to the dealership to pick up another one and another one and another one. So virtually everything on this bike is built for comfort, for touring rides, for interstate riding, and for even two up, two person riding across great distances. And that's probably the main theme of this entire bike and it is probably the biggest reason why people keep purchasing Ultra Classics and Ultra Limiteds. Number one, just the sheer size of the bike. It's a really big motorcycle front to back. It's a big motorcycle left to right. So as far as visibility and safety go on the road, you're gonna be really hard to miss when you're riding on a unit of such substantial size. One of the most important things we talk about when we talk about touring bikes and bikes that are meant for long haul riding is the fact that they need to be really, really comfortable. And the thing that the Ultra Limited has always been known for is for being sort of at the forefront of what it means to be comfortable on top of a big touring bike. Probably the most important thing that people think about when they think about uh, comfort on a big bike like this is the seat. And I gotta tell you, this thing is plush. There's a lot of support, but there's a lot of softness. Your, your entire sort of sitting mechanism, if you will, is just enveloped in this big cushy seat that you know you could do 500 miles in and not even know it. The next thing are the handlebars. Now, these are just the stock touring handlebars, and it's probably a part that a lot of people will replace to put on something that is either more their aesthetic, more their style, or something that's gonna fit them better than what comes on the bike stock. But I gotta tell you, just sitting here on the bike, my arms, stick out my arms, bend a little bit, let them fall. That's where my handlebars are, that's where the grips are, and that's a part of what makes it so comfortable. Uh, the features don't stop there. This Ultra Limited happens to come with heated grips. It's July in Florida, so obviously there's no reason to kick those on right now, but knowing that it does get down into the, in the 30s and 40s, uh, especially, you know, dead of winter here in Florida and definitely in states that are farther north in Florida, you know, heated grips are something that are a luxury and they're gonna help keep you more comfortable for longer rides on a bike like this. The next thing to point out is this huge windshield that sits on top of a really big fairing and that's all for blocking wind when you're doing hundreds of miles at a time when you're riding the bike for hours you know sometimes up to three hours between fill-ups wind fatigue if you don't have a fairing or don't have a windshield can definitely bring down the experience and it might even mean you take longer to get to your destination but with this big windshield and this adjustable vent in the front and the fairing up here and these vents that are down here in the lower fairings Wind fatigue is pretty much a non-starter because you don't really have to worry about much of it. So I mentioned that a bike like this is set up for two up riding or two person riding. And that's definitely one of the main focuses of the design and the build of an Ultra Limited or an Ultra Classic. If you've watched the review of my Street Glide, you'll know that on the Street Glide, I do have a big Ultra Classic seat on it, but I don't have the touring pack. I don't have the wraparound backrest. You know, while I didn't bring Haley out here with me to do a review of the passenger experience on a bike like this, I would challenge you to count the number of Ultra Limiteds that you see going down the road and then count how many of those have only one person on them. It's pretty rare to see an Ultra Limited going down the interstate without two people on them. And the reason for that is that these are just perfect bikes for two people. Haley and I have done about a four hour one way ride before at a mobile. And with the backrest that comes with the Street Glide, that is definitely not a real big issue. But as you saw in some of my videos from June, um, I did a 1200 mile one way road trip from North Florida back up to the Midwest. And if we had tried to do that on my Street Glide without the tour pack and without this wraparound backrest, I don't think we would have gotten through that kind of ride. So before Haley and I, or before you and your passenger take off on an eight hour a day, thousand mile road trip it's probably a good thing to invest in something like a full wraparound backrest or just heck get the whole bike because this is sort of the cadillac of two up riding when it comes to long distance interstate traveling 
It's worth noting that the passenger, like I said, does get the wraparound backrest. They do get the extra support. They do get the wide seat that sits behind the driver. And then you also get these wraparound rear speakers that, you know, if you're if you're just one person on this, you get full four speaker, full surround sound. But if you're the, if you're the passenger on this bike, having these speakers and being able to enjoy the music in your own space is definitely a plus. Aside from that, you also get heated seats on this particular unit, as well as volume controls on the right side of the passenger seat. So now obviously, if you're gonna be taking a multi-day, multi-thousand mile ride, or just taking a full long motorcycling trip, one of the main concerns you're gonna have is how much luggage capacity do I have? And with an ultra limited like this one, you get a ton of luggage space. Now, just like my Street Glide, this has the saddlebags that you'll find on virtually all of Harley Davidson's touring bikes, but you also get this tour pack. And when I would first look at a tour pack, I'd think, how much stuff could you really get in there? And the fact of the matter is, this is a lot of luggage space. I've added some of my video equipment in here and a helmet just to sort of show, and it's not packed in there. And voila, this thing's not even really packed that tight. But I did all that just to sort of illustrate how much luggage space that you have on the bike by itself with what it comes with from the factory. But on top of that, you also have a luggage rack. So if you needed to throw some more bags up, if you needed to load up the back with more luggage, then you definitely could. Part of being one of Harley's uh, Cadillac bikes, if you will, is receiving a lot of attention to detail and some of the finest, coolest parts put on your bike. And that includes things like the Daymaker headlight, the running lights that are also LEDs, uh, the chrome fittings on the front and back of fenders with the extra reflectors, and of course this beautiful sort of silver blue and dark blue two-tone paint job that also comes with a sort of in-between blue paint stripe. And that color theme goes all the way throughout the bike. I'm usually not a fan of two-tone color schemes like this one, but uh, blue being my favorite color, this definitely works for me. And if you're wondering what this Ultra Limited sounds like with its stock intake, stock motor, and its stock exhaust, here's a startup and a few revs. Well, that's enough looking. Let's go ahead and get this Ultra Limited out on the road see how she rides. So I mentioned it earlier about how this bike is pretty much designed and built for just comfort for both the rider and the passenger and I can't, I cannot exaggerate how comfortable this bike is. I, it's, <laughs> I don't, I'm a pretty good, I was a pretty good English student. I'm decent with words sometimes, but I have to tell you, this bike is just it's hard to exaggerate how comfortable it is. Ooh, we're getting some rain. And I, and I know it sounds silly, it sounds like I'm just freaking out, and it really can't be overstated. Just how comfortable this motorcycle is. The seat is incredibly plush, incredibly comfortable. Um, the footboards, I swear, have more vibration isolation than the ones on my street glide. In fact, I would, I would argue that they definitely do. This Limited has the 114 in it, the Milwaukee 8 114, so you know it's got the guts to get up and go, even if you're fully loaded down. And one of the things that I think intimidates people who haven't done a lot of riding and they see bikes like this, they just see this massive unit and they think, ah, you know, I could never handle that much weight. What would happen if it were to fall over? I don't even think I could keep the bike upright if I'm sitting at a red light. And to that I say, nonsense. Nonsense. Learning how to pick up a big bike, there's YouTube videos all over the place on how to do that the right and the easy way. And this bike is not too big. It is not unruly. This is the go-down-the-road bike. And there's a reason for that. So I'll be honest, being a street glide owner and street glide rider, you know, I kind of viewed it the same way people might view, you know, other decisions when it comes to what sort of car to buy, you know? You know, why buy a Cadillac if a well-optioned Chevrolet will do the job, right? You know, why buy the Ultra Limited if a souped up street glide will do the deal? And the fact of the matter is, I don't have the souped up street glide, but I've got 
pretty much all the parts on a street glide that I would want on it to suit my needs. And uh, <laughs> it just does not compare, y'all. It just doesn't even come close. This bike is so comfortable. You know, I just a little more than a week ago, I got back from uh, my summer trip back up to the Midwest from Tallahassee here to Iowa, Minnesota, and South Dakota. My fiance and I went and saw some family, and uh, it's about 1,200 miles one way. So the whole trip between traveling between cities and getting to the Midwest and getting back was around 2,600 miles or so. And I definitely paid for it, whether it was in soreness or you know, just a little bit of achy, achy joints here and there from having sat for so long. If I had been sitting on this, I wouldn't be nearly as sore. And that 114, I know, I've said it a million times, guys. These Milwaukee 8s are just a different heart. I love the black finished dash on the inside of the fairing. Why wouldn't you buy one of these? And with all the technology you can get on them, whether it's for safety features or infotainment. There's pretty much nothing you could want out of a motorcycle for interstate touring riding. There's nothing you could want that this bike's not gonna give you. Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out my review of this 2019 Ultra Limited. If you have any questions about this bike or any of the bikes you see featured on my channel, head to TallahasseeHarley.com. I've been the two-wheel teacher, and until next time, I'll see you on the road.